everybody. Really glad to have you here. Wish there were more of you, but they missed it. <laughs> um, I'm going to take this moment to introduce a special guest, Mayor Eileen Foley. Listen. 
You could actually tell what size Buck is getting <laughs> by what kind of noise it makes. Like if you hear, bah, bah, bah. those are just three little mosquitoes getting. If you hear, mm -hmm. it's one of them big sucker gypsy moths. <laughs> and of course, if you hear, mm -hmm. that's a blue jay. <laughs> Try to crack a smile, miss, sometime during the show, okay? And we have all kinds of entertainment coming up. You're going to see me about 12 million times. So if you hate me now, wait a while. Okay, because uh, I'm the host of the show. And I get to come up and, uh, you know, if the act is really good, I come up and say things like, did you like them? I wrote all their stuff. <laughs> and take full credit. But uh, all the talent that I've seen backstage and heard previously, top of the line stuff, that's right. Get you tape up. Are you doing the lace? Fixing, fixing the Velcro? Oh, a buckle. Oh. It's not good when sneakers have buckles. That's all I can tell you. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. And you hail from Portsmouth, Lauren? No? Yet you use the park on occasion. No, you just wandered the street aimlessly and showed up here tonight. Yeah. What do you do for a living, Lauren? A personal assistant. Here you go, Rich. <laughs> what town do you live in, Lauren? New York City. In New York City. Ooh, this is a bitch of a commute, isn't it? <laughs> now, Lauren, living in New York City, do you like all your neighbors there in New York? No. No? Well, Lauren, you have come to the heart of America to learn Las Vegas East. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which if you don't like your neighbors, too many people get all violent with their neighbors now that no need. It's easy to deal with people. You don't like your neighbors? Go to the post office. Get them a change of address card. <laughs> Send their mail to all Croatia. What do you care? You hate them anyway. Sometimes, ladies, it's sexual harassment on the job. Sound crappy man giving you a hard time? No problem. Find out where they park. People love to park their cars same place every day. Find out make, model number, license plate. Then call a towing company. Have their car towed. Then call the cops. Report it stolen. <laughs> then surreptitiously fax the guy where his car has been towed to. Takes a $30 cab ride down to get his car. 40 bucks to bail the car out. On the way home, cops pull him over for stealing his own car. That's a good laugh on you, sir. Ah, ah, ah. It is, it's good when you're a comedian to hear laughs. Believe me. Uh, I did a show a couple of weeks ago, a woman laughed. Ha, ha, ha. I was there for real laugh. Ha, ha, ha. You don't hear that kind of laugh that often. You'll see it in print. But you won't hear you. Ha, ha, ha. My favorite is there'll be beautiful women in the front. I'll tell the joke. One of them goes, <laughs> Holy cow, somebody checked the grain silo. I think there's trouble in the heartland. Sometimes you can tell how old somebody's getting by how they laugh. Because it ends in a cough. Starts as a laugh. Ends as a cough. <laughs> Get in the very back of the bus. Open the rear window.
to smile. There you go. What's your name? Judy. Judy. Oh, what do you do for a living, Judy? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, don't you think that's quite an attitude? <laughs> Somebody who doesn't do nothing? You look like you pretty much got that down, too, Judy. <laughs> are you going to school? Yeah? Well, that's something. Where are you going to school? Portsmouth High. Which, uh, what's the mascot of Portsmouth High? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Check a book. Okay, Judy? I'll be right there on there. I'll be like some kind of a duck or a, a Wolverine or something. Anybody else go to Portsmouth High here? No, I was going to have you do the fight song. <laughs> That's out of the question if you don't even know who the mascot is. Yeah? <laughs> so I'm glad you came on down here tonight. Are you ready to have a good time? Oh, yeah. Oh, listen to that enthusiasm. Ah, it's been up a long time. I want you to have a good time, and damn it, if you start to get cranky on me, I can come right down there. <laughs> three dimensions and I will be up there in your face because uh, we have lots we have I think 382 different performers to come out here this week and uh, each of them has given up their time just like you have given up yourselves to come on down here and support Prescott Park where you all can go and have a good time summer or winter although it's easier to get a good place in the winter <laughs> Chase Lounge anyway. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So uh, I want you to, to have a good, uh, good time, sit back, relax. Um, your cocktail waitresses will be right out. No, they won't. No, they won't. But you know, we'll have an intermission a little bit later on when you can go up and, and take care of business in the back there, have a few little, uh, you know, you, you don't want to hydrate during a show. But uh, I want you to have a good time. The first gentleman I, I've just met, well, very nice uh, guys, and uh, they hail from, I, I said, where are you guys from? They went, New York. And I said, oh, you're from New York. I said, no, we're from York. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. That's yeah. right, some fans of the Yorksters right here. And uh, they're going to do a, they're very uh, introspective, they'll do kind of a new speak kind of a thing. Something you, you probably, uh, well, you're in Portsmouth. This is going to be a very hip thing. I like them, uh, it's Mateo and Django, and uh, they're known as the Young Philosophers, or as YP. Please, a nice round of applause. Yeah. 
the judgment day. The Orioles in the crowd makes them lose their minds. I'm on to the next thing. Scattering and gathering, scrubbing and the gathering. Tripping on the itchy, twitchy ace of so your mama's place. So I serve to the next thing. Eclectic with sex. Love it, baby. Put your ass in there.
benefits. No future. How do I join this squad? No problem. I go into my, my neighborhood, Little Peach. That's the convenience food store. Lil. Not little, Lil. Isn't <laughs> that cute? And I get seven items, you know, and they have no baskets to carry in. So I gotta muscle these things up at the counter and I toss them on up there. And sister of the Arby's cheese girl <laughs> is working behind the counter and she has, you know, teased her hair up huge, mutant size. And she looks and brings the stuff up, seven items, 480 bucks, something like that. Very convenient. And she looks at me and she goes, but would you like a bag for that? Seven items, a bag. Hey, there's a novel idea, huh? Yes, I'd like a... No, no, of course not. I'm in town with the Russian circus. I'm the new juggler. When I get the fifth item airborne, you hit me with the eggs, okay? Yes, I'd like a bag. Now she tries to guilt me out of my bag. My rightful bag. She says, well, you know, you could save a tree. I could save a tree. Meanwhile, she has emptied an entire can of hairspray onto her own head and her own little one-woman screw the ozone layer motif. But me, I'm raping the rainforest. So she made me crazy. Thank you. You know, you've turned into a crowd. I think YP has done that. Did a nice job. That's right. As individuals, hmm, as a crowd. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, now, you know, the people I'm going to bring up are the regular Einsteins. Now, we just had the young philosophers on. And now we've got the regular Einsteins. This is a heady night. <laughs> I just met these cats backstage. They hail from Franconia, where that notch thing is. And uh, they play uh, what they describe. I said, describe what you do. And they said, well, we play squeegee beat music, which means after their songs are done, all of your windshields will be clean outside. And they're a fabulous band, and they deserve your nice round of applause. Please, the regular Einstein.
Prescott Park, they're having financial difficulties, and we're putting a little show together. Would you like to be a part of it? And I said, well, will there be a grand piano? <laughs> she said, of course, because we're going to be at the beautiful music hall, where all great things take place in the Portsmouth area. By the way, all these guys helping us out doing the stage work are giving it their time, too. Please give them a nice round of applause.
give you Hendrix off this vocal mic any second. That's right. My guys. Could you just put that piano in my car? For me, I'll be using that a little bit later on. How are you, miss? What's your name? Kathy. Kathy, yeah, my sister's name is Kathy. Can I borrow money from you too? No. What do you do for a living, Kathy? An accountant? Oh, this must be an exciting night for you then, huh? I mean, people and all. <laughs> Just for you, Kathy. Quick impression. The number five. <laughs> Who's a nurse here? Anybody in the medical industry? No, Mike, we're not telling. <laughs> Any doctors here? Any lawyers? No, but I play one on TV. You know, law is something your mom used to want you to go into. All until we let these shit balls advertise on television. <laughs> no ethics left in law. Ha! I'm attorney Jim Suckala. Have <laughs> you ever fallen on your back and said to yourself, Hey! There could be some serious cake involved here. Well, if you've been looking for someone to sue, but haven't known who to call, you get your pencil ready. We've been chasing ambulances from Bhopal to Chernobyl. <laughs> Here are some of our past legal successes. Smashed vertebrae in the dozer accident. $485,000. Loss of arm at the mall. $279,000. Crushed testicle in the fridge. $75. Think you could get more for one of them? <laughs> Ask the Bobbies. Which I thought that was a hilarious name for that couple, huh? Bobbit? Take a little off the top? No, just Bobbit. I mean, we're talking about two loose cannons. You know, those are the kind of people that if you ever met them at a party, you know, you'd start talking to them going, uh huh? Uh huh? Honey? Honey, you got the stamp? Give me the stamp. No breeding. You know. We're talking the shallow end of the gene pool, okay? You know, he was a white beaten scum spit up from the belly of hell. You know, they sugarcoat it. And uh, she was just a mutant from outer space. I mean, she lops off his wanker and decides, hey, good time for a spin. Let's go out for a drive. Actually testified in court that she forgot she had it in her hand. <laughs> Which I gotta think that we can all agree that is a tiny wanker. <laughs> Hardly even worth asking for that thing back. <laughs> Take up a hobby. <laughs> so she's driving along. I wonder what's on FNX. Oh my God! <laughs> Tosses that baby out the window. They're gonna send the cops out looking for her. I'd like to have been at the station house when that call came down. Huh? All right, somebody's gonna go out looking for a unit. <laughs> looking for a what? I got 20 years in on the force. I ain't look for one of those yet, and I ain't looking today. <laughs> Send the rookie in the dark. <laughs> rookie in the dark out there looking, looking. Hey, hey, drop it. <laughs> drop it. Trade your tennis ball. just met them backstage, and uh, the name of the band is White Noise, and when you see them, you'll go, this isn't what I expected, because they, uh, you know, they thought it was going to be people who were pierced, <laughs> all kinds of, you know, stuff shooting out of their heads, but uh, this is a good laugh, sir. Eh?
Macedonia and Slovenia. And I thought, hey, screw the Caribbean. <laughs> Please send me to places where they're currently using the potato as a currency. That'd be great. Because <laughs> I get to fly, I flew on uh, eight different airlines in four days, one of which was Air Croatia. Oh yeah, there's some frequent flyer miles you want to hold on to. <laughs> so I'm thinking exactly who is the, what are the stewardesses going to look like on this flight? You know, how they start the plant. <laughs> some big giant Bulgarian woman with a mustache and one tooth good for opening cans. <laughs> oh, hey man. Luckily that wasn't the case. It was good, except thing they brought me into Macedonia. See, I thought it was Macedonia before I went, but then when we showed up and they went, no, no, it's pronounced Macedonia. And I thought, oh, I've had your nuts. Very nice. <laughs> and at the end of this month, I get to go, here's the two, two places I start at. I go to Haiti on this USO thing, and then I go to Cuba. And I'm thinking, shit, what do I do over there? Haiti, Cuba, ah! Boat races. Because <laughs> this is like the real race to the America's Cup, if you know what I mean. Hey man, you know, anybody can take a $30 million yacht with 15 pretty blonde boys working the winches and getting the sails up and sail that easy enough. But, if you got an old bathtub with truck tires all around it, an 18 year family ready to pile into that bay to go across shark infested waters in bad weather, and you can make it, you are my kind of captain. I want you at the helm of my yacht. Absolutely. You're holding your head like, oh, I'm having pain. The tumor. You looked at me early in the show, you looked like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like Satan. <laughs> What's your name? Kara? No, last name, Rabumbier? <laughs>
Folks, you know, doctors in England, this is, this is true. You know, you read stupid stuff in the paper. People ask me, Mike, how do you write comedy? And I tell them, well, you get up in the morning, you put the coffee on, you go to the door, you open up the door, and you get the paper, and you read the headline. The headline says, White locks off husband's penis. As a comedian, you go, good day. <laughs> so this is true. I'm reading in the paper, doctors in England have just invented a new cigarette that actually cures hemorrhoids. <laughs> which definitely gives new meaning to the phrase, let's smoke a butt. <laughs> They'll name cigarettes after anything. Uh, you know, you, you've got the Merits, they're named after a gas station. Newport's named after a small coastal Rhode Island city. I get hold of a bad pack of butt tuckets a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> People come up to you, they get a cigarette, they go. You got a match? She just spit a pancreas across her own there. And you gotta call in the chimney sweep to wire brush the bronchial tools. There's a potential problem. That's right. Well, these folks, I just met them backstage. Very nice. And uh, I was looking all over in the back for them, and it turns out that they were right there in the front. Thus my confusion. <laughs> and um, they're going to do a little jazz for you, but uh, I want you to know that Luis Rogers has previously won the best jazz artist in New Hampshire. So we're not talking some squash player who shows up. <laughs> do a little jazz. We're talking major leagues. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so sit right back, have a good time. Miss Louise Rogers and Rick Strong. Give it to you.
Who's a mom here? Yeah? How many kids do you have? One. Sorry to catch you on full sentence tonight. <laughs> What'd your child weigh at birth? 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven? Should open a store. <laughs> kids. I had a woman actually tell me, I said, did you have a natural childbirth? Yes, I did. I said, how much did he weigh? 16 pounds. 16, evidently gave birth to a teenager. Because uh, 16 pounds, man. There'd be no such thing as natural childbirth if men were giving birth to the children. Okay, because men try and push women. Come on, honey. Gut it out. Off to the woods with you. Bite down on this leather thong. Be a good squaw. Bring me back a man child. Uh, it was natural child. Men, would, would you like that naturally, Mr. McDonald? Yeah, right. Shoot the heroin directly into my head now, please. Wake me up in a month when he's had a hundred baths and he's got a little sailor suit on. <laughs> Sixteen pounds. Well, let me put it to you this way. This past Thanksgiving, I sat down at a table. The table had a turkey on it. The turkey must have weighed, oh, seven, eleven, sixteen pounds. And I cannot even imagine. Evacuating something that size, <laughs> let alone having it come out Malaya. <laughs> so I salute all you moms out there tonight. Yeah, because they're tougher men than I am, I'll tell you that. Sure. Well, I have the pleasure of uh, bringing this next gentleman on up, who uh, normally is performing in New York, and he's had a couple albums out on EMI. He's worked with the likes of uh, Lenny Kravitz. And Diana Ross, sort of tune from Diana Ross. And uh, where else would that bring him? <laughs> but the Mecca of Entertainment. <laughs> Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I know you're gonna love him. Please a nice round nice or how do you get your teeth? Please a nice round of applause, Mr. Christopher Max.
this has been just a, an astounding night. Like I said in the beginning, baby missed it. <laughs> um, Carrie and I, because we are local, we keep it to a minimum because we're the old folks, but the young folks have a night, okay? Going to do one song. Is London going to play? Oh, and Chris is going to play.
the gun. Now, you know, we've got to see uh, a bunch of uh, people who know Gene uh, from a family standpoint. We had YP up, we had Christopher Max up. We just saw London walk on seconds ago, play a little guitar for you. And uh, he is uh, right now in the midst of recording. Isn't that right, London? Evidently, he went to London <laughs> for a couple of seconds. Have you ever been to England? Anybody here? Have you been to England? Yeah. Because the English in ourselves, we have two peoples divided by one language. We have the, the English, we have weird words and phrases that we don't use here. You know, uh, Fanny. You know about the word Fanny? My friend, yeah, because Fanny does not mean you bottom over in England. Fanny is a slang term for the female frontal <laughs> nerve quadrant. <laughs> so if you see a pretty girl and you go, hey, nice fanny, you better be wearing a helmet. <laughs> if you need a wake-up call in the morning, you stay in a hotel, you say, can I give me uh, seven in the morning to wake up call? You gotta go, right, knock you up at seven? <laughs> no, thank you very much. <laughs> Send the French maid up if you'd like. If you're in class and you make a mistake on your paper and you need an eraser, you know what you ask for? A rubber. That's what they call erasers over there. Excuse me. Can I borrow your rubber? I'll give it right back to you. No, thank you very much. You can keep that baby as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, I can see uh, my man London has uh, got the bridge to fall down. And he's ready to come on up. He's a, a very nice gentleman. I get to talk to him a little bit earlier. And uh, as you can see, he oozes the talent of the McDaniel clan. Huh? <laughs> Fabulously done. Uh, I know you're going to enjoy him. Please, a nice round of applause for Mr. London Zulu. Yeah. 